familiar news of another mass shooting in this country. It's the 15th this year, according to the Associated Press. Early this morning, police say 57-year-old Sam Cassidy shot and killed eight people at the transit facility where he worked in San Jose, California. The Sheriff's Department says the shooting happened during a meeting at the Valley Transportation Authority, which provides bus, light rail, and other transit services throughout Santa Clara County. BNC correspondent Unser Hassan is learning more about the victims, the survivors, and the shooter as we hear another chorus of calls for lawmakers to enact stricter gun control measures. The flags are at half staff at the Santa Clara County offices just across the street from the VTA facility. San Jose police and county deputies rushed into buildings as shots were being fired off. Our deputies saw the suspect and then the suspect took his own life. So we believe that what they did probably saved additional lives. Around 6.30 a.m. local time, there were multiple calls to 911 of multiple gunshots coming from the VTA location. So far, eight people are confirmed dead shot by a gunman who authorities say was a VT employee himself. I think everyone right now who's waiting to hear about their family are praying. They're confused because they don't have all the information and the county is coming together to make sure that not only are they getting the services from the Red Cross, but they're getting the grief counseling and information that's going to help them figure out what happened. San Jose City Council member Raul Perales says one of his childhood friends of 30 years is a VTA employee. He thinks his friend is one of the eight people who were shot and killed. Outlook does not look positive considering the number of deceased individuals and those that we feel right have actually made it to the hospital. Uh, you know, and, and so, um, you know, I think it's 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 unconfirmed at the moment, but certainly, um, yeah, the emotions are uh, are really high right now. National Bar Association President C.K. Hoffler is joining me by phone tonight. C.K., thanks for being here. Uh, I don't believe I can hear CK on the phone. Can you hear me? Um, hello? Ah, uh, gotcha. Yes. Yes. Good evening. All right. Good evening. Thank you for being with me, CK. Um, there's a number of legal stories I want to get into, but first, I'd like to get your thoughts on today's breaking news about the mass shooting in San Jose, California, and the following statement President Biden put out tonight. He wrote in part, enough once again, I urge Congress to take immediate action and heed the call of the American people, including the vast majority of gun owners, to help end this epidemic of gun violence in America. Every life that is taken by a bullet pierces the soul of our nation. We can and we must do more. Your thoughts? Well, um, I was in Washington over the past couple of days um, meeting with the administration. I met with the vice president um, and I was accompanying George Floyd's family members, his brothers and other family members, and they met with the president of the United States. And we also met with the vice president. We also met with Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, uh, Congresswoman Karen Bass, who introduced the legislation. And we met with um, Senator Tim Scott, Senator Graham, and Senator Cory Booker. And the sole discussion that we had was about the George Floyd Justin Policing Act and the fact that it needs mm -hmm. to be passed. And they are more optimistic now than ever that both sides will be able to come together. They're cautiously optimistic that they will be able to come together and that there will be something that they can agree to because enough is enough. I think everyone is tired, um, sick and tired, and the, 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 the carnage is building up. So what do I think about it? We have got to continue working. People have to call their senators and insist they must insist that the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act be passed. And I think that is the only way that we're going to see this. The citizens of this country must call their senators. They can 224-3121, um, um, just call the U.S. Senate, 202-224-3121. And that is what we have to do as citizens, because otherwise this will continue and it's going to get worse. And whenever you see both sides saying they're optimistic, it's time, the time is now, and more people are getting killed on a daily basis, we know that we've got to have change. The president wants it. Uh, Congress wants it. Many of the senators want it. So they've got to do it. But the American public has got to put pressure on them. And we're actually going to get into that um, in a few in terms of your uh, being with the family on Capitol Hill with lawmakers and uh, the president. But I wanted to get your take on today's mass shooting. Do you have any thoughts about that? 
another devastating tragedy. And what it illustrates is there's a need for, um, you know, gun control, policing reform, gun control, and just ensuring that in this country we take these issues seriously. Um, Right now, anyone can just, there can be mass shootings galore, and the ramifications are that there are people that are killed, that are murdered, but those are the victims. And then and then a lot of times the shooters, they will kill themselves. And so the country is left with this abyss, with this void, and with this awful, awful, awful feeling that this is going to continue. And the fear to even leave your home. A lot of people have fear of leaving their home, having their children go out. Mm-hmm. So my thoughts are we've got to have policing reform. We've got to have gun control reform. Now, CK, some states like Texas are making it easier for people to possess guns. Governor Greg Abbott says he will sign into law a bill that's just that just passed the House and Senate, and it's going to allow people to carry handguns without a license, a background check, or training. Texas has already have, uh, they've had, I mean, they do have the least restrictive gun laws in the nation and a history of mass shooting. So why do you think Texas and other states are moving in the opposite direction? Unfortunately, this has become a political issue. And just like COVID should not be a political issue, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act should not be a political issue. Gun control should not be a political issue. And Texas is like the OK Corral. And there are other states that are like that, too. And it's devastating. And if there, if we are not going to take this seriously, we're going to have more carnage. OK, now let's switch gears and discuss uh, what you mentioned earlier about the Floyd family visiting the White House yesterday on the one year anniversary of George Floyd's death. You spoke so beautifully at the White House ceremony honoring George Floyd. Can you share that moment and a little uh, of what you said with viewers? Well, first of all, um, you know, Ben Crump, who's one of my past presidents of the National Bar Association, is a lawyer extraordinaire, along with Chris Stewart and Justin Miller. But the. George Floyd's family, his children, um, his brothers, all of his family members really, truly are great Americans who put their personal, their personal grief and feelings and emptiness aside for the good of this country, for the passage of the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Yesterday was not a celebration. It was just marking the anniversary of his of his Mm -hmm. devastating murder. So very, very difficult for the family, but a moment in time where they met with the president, the vice president for, you know, a very long time. And there was very strong um, personal engagement where um, our team our and I say our team, you know, I'm president of the National Bar Association. We are a social justice organization. We're mission driven. And Ben Crump and, you know, Justin and Chris are our members. Our members are leading the charge. And particularly, we see Ben Crump on the front lines. And so engaging with members of Congress and the U.S. Senate was critically important into, for galvanizing the support for the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Pressure must be exerted until there is a deal. And that's why we were there. That's why George Floyd's family was there. And that's why um, we believe there's momentum. And also, we did have um, Lil Baby there as well. And what he represents in a young generation and um, is that everyone must join together in supporting the passage of this bill. Literally, we're going to continue to die. Black and brown people will continue to die if this is not passed. And we have a lot of work to do on a statewide level as well. So um, it was just a moment in time in history that I will never forget. I, I think that we're all hopeful that this legislation will pass through the Senate. But there are two sticking points, um, one being a qualified immunity, which would make it easier for people to sue cops in their individual capacity in civil court, and the color of law provision, which would make it easier to prosecute cops criminally. How important are these provisions, and should Democrats compromise on those issues? Well, I think these, these provisions are very, very important. Um, very important. And I think the compromise has to be from both sides. You know, compromise has to be from both sides. It can't just be the Democrats compromising and the Republicans not compromising because actually this is an American issue. This is not a partisan issue. So both sides right now should put those partisan feelings aside and come up with legislation that is fair and that will stop these murders. An American issue. 
justice. Justice for one is justice for all. So what I think about that is we've got to put aside the politics and get this done. It must be done. And that's only a first mm -hmm. step. All right, C.K. Hoffler is going to stay with us after the break. We're going to talk about the confirmation of Kristen Clark. Absolutely.